Hello everyone, Stephen Clark and friends here with another news from Thailand and Southeast Asia and beyond. Hope you're all fit and well. Well, let's have a look what we've got today. Hong Kong and the Chinese Communist Party approves Hong Kong's national security law amongst massive demonstrations about the new security law from the Chinese Communist Party or the Hong Kong administration. Yes, yeah, one of the two anyway. July the 1st will end lockdowns in Thailand, including international travel. A look at high-speed railway travel between Thailand and China. Chinese coronavirus fear, not politics behind extending emergency degree. Thailand's government has announced Thai doctors face charges for involvement in cross-border surrogate racket. Central Shopping Centre buys out Family Mart Thailand completely. Restaurant sales plummet 80% in Thailand. Three people slain in a radio station in Thailand. And don't forget, all these news articles you are watching now will be discussed on our live stream channel, Talkback Thailand, where our viewers can have a say as well. Just follow the link in the description below. The Chinese Communist Party approves Hong Kong's national security law. The city risks losing special status. What are the new national security laws? Here we go. The basic law of Hong Kong's mini constitution calls for the city to enact national security law to prohibit treason, succession, sedition, subversion against the Chinese government in its reference to an Article 23. Hong Kong lawmakers in China on Thursday passed legislation that will extend the country's opaque national security law to Hong Kong, an expected move that has prompted large demonstrations in the city and a warning from Washington. The bill, which passed by votes of 2,878 in favour to one objection. The one objection is now dead. <laughs> it has put the Asian hub's economic status at risk in Washington where Secretary of State Mike Pompei said Wednesday that Hong Kong no longer deserved special treatment. No reasonable person can assert today that maintains a high degree of autonomy from China, given the facts on the ground, he said. The vote at the annual meeting of the National People's Congress, China's parliament, could prompt more countries to follow the US in re-evaluating trade agreements with Hong Kong, which is home to many multinational companies and Asia's headquarters. The former British colony returned to the Chinese rule in 1997 and has enjoyed a high degree of autonomy under the framework of one country, two systems, which set it apart from the mainland's financial and business centers, such as Shanghai and Shenzhen. Hong Kong maintains an independent judiciary and separate currency and financial system and guaranteed freedom of speech. Hong Kong's CEO said, no need to worry about national security laws. China's top military commander in Hong Kong has emphasized the rule of the Chinese Communist Party and its military commander in Hong Kong has emphasized the role of the People's Liberation Army in upholding the Chinese Communist Party's version of upholding national sovereignty in the city a day ahead of expected anti-government protests. I don't know why everybody's picking on China. They've got a problem with the Indians on the border, South China Sea problems, problems with Taiwan, problems with Hong Kong. Oh, I forgot the uh, Chinese coronavirus. July the 1st, international travel will start again in Thailand. The Thai government is saying it will lift all remaining business and activities lockdowns on July the 1st, according to the National Security Council chief. This will include domestic travel, international travel, as well as the end of emergency degrees and curfews. This will lift all restrictions imposed under the country's emergency degree. This will be a complete reopening of Thailand. But the end to all the restrictions will still mean some measures will remain in place as the new normal for social behaviour. 
National Security Council Secretary maintains that the people's cooperation is important. This concerns the use of face masks, social distancing, hand washing and limited activities. As long as the disease is spread worldwide, we will have to fight against it for a while. National Security Council Secretary said that the emergency degree will remain until the end of June and the ban on international travel would continue until then. A third phase of the reopening is scheduled to be put in place for June the 1st. They also pointed out the curfew hours will also be shortened for June. Some of the restrictions and paperwork required for domestic travel will also be eased during June. Well that's okay you space travellers, now you can buy a ticket to Thailand after June the 1st. The 253 kilometre rail route from Bangkok to Nikon Ratchasima in the northeast is part of a high speed train project linking Bangkok to Nong Khai bordering with Lao. The signing of the high speed railway between Thailand and China is expected in October. China and Thailand agreed on a 50.6 billion baht draft contract including the content of the signalling and operation system. The 253 kilometre route from Bangkok to Nikon Ratchasima in the northeast is part of a high speed train project linking Bangkok to Nong Khai which borders with Lao and then on to China. 80% of the payment will be made in US currency and the remaining 20% will be made in Thai baht. There are a total of 14 contracts involved in the 253 kilometre rail route from Bangkok to Nikon Ratchasima in the northeast. Prime Minister Priyat Achinacha will preside over the signing ceremony at Government House. This is great news for Thailand. Now the Chinese can get a direct fast train from many cities in China directly to Thailand and Bangkok. And this will bring a flood of Chinese tourists into Thailand and also bring a lot of freight into Thailand from China as well directly. And once the Chinese have converted the Thailand ports, Chinese goods can be shipped all across the world from Bangkok ports, which will create a lot of jobs for the People's Republic of China. Chinese coronavirus fears and not politics behind extending emergency degree in Thailand. Thailand's deputy prime minister says fears of a second wave of infection and not politics is behind the government's need to extend the emergency degree. A lockdown measures are set to loosen that has created massive economic and personal hardships. General Prawat Wangsalon said the emergency degree implemented to slow the spread of the Chinese coronavirus is not politically motivated and the government is being cautious about a possible second wave of the Chinese coronavirus infection. General Prowat's comments came as the cabinet is expected to extend the emergency degree for another month. However, opposition and critics disagree with prolonging the emergency degree, saying that the Communicable Disease Act alone should be enough to control the spread of the Chinese coronavirus. They also agreed that General Priyat Chinacha and his government have hidden agendas, alleging they want to hold on to emergency degree powers for political reasons. Anti-human trafficking police have summoned the Thai doctor to acknowledge charges of involvement in Chinese-funded cross-border surrogate services using Thai women to bear babies for Chinese couples. The police said the doctor, whose name is being withheld, used to work at a state hospital in the Victoria Monument area of Bangkok, allegedly responsible for providing assisted reproductive services to surrogate Thai mothers, usually at uh, clinics at the Lao Republic. The surrogate mothers then return to Thailand and when nearly ready to give birth, they are sent back to China for delivery. Four other doctors at state hospitals will also be invited to provide information 
to anti-human traffic and police about the racket. A woman suspected of being a broker who allegedly handled financial transactions for the racket was arrested in Bangkok on Monday. She was later released on a 200,000 baht bail. In February this year, police raided a house in the Lat Pro area and found seven Thai women, all of them pregnant, and a 20-day-old baby under the care of a woman who claimed to have been paid 14,000 baht to look after the baby in the house. Due to the Chinese coronavirus pandemic and the closure of all borders, the surrogate mothers are now having to give birth in Thailand instead of China. Shopping centre operator Central Retail Corporation has bought 100% of Family Mart, one of Thailand's major convenience store chains, which are in opposition to 7-Eleven. CRC Chief Executive Officer said that the acquisition will strengthen Central's hold on the food market and convenience store business in Thailand. Since 2012, CRC has partnered with Japanese Family Mart who had a 50.65% stake. CRC snapped up the remaining 49% from the Japanese partner, making it the sole owner of Family Mart's Thailand operations. Family Mart has become a destination for Thais, with ready-to-eat meals, beverages, fresh coffee, and open spaces for people to come and mix and mingle 24 hours a day. Currently, Family Mart has 1,000 stores nationwide, and we plan to continue expanding our stores as we are committed to investing for the future, said a Family Mart spokesman. Earlier this year, Family Mart introduced 24-7 coin washing machines to cater for customers' busy lifestyles. Recently, it also launched Food, Drink and Container Mart, ready-to-eat meals, as well as vending machines offering more for customer satisfaction. As customers today demand fast service, Family Mart has partnered with Grab Thailand to allow customers to have items delivered using a Grab Mart application you put on your phone. Convenience stores are big business in Thailand, there's one on every corner. So there will be huge competition from Family Mart and 7-Eleven, which could actually end up in a price war and force the price of goods down for the Thai consumer. Bangkok, Thailand. Sales at restaurants dropped by 80%. They were ordered to limit the number of customers amid the Chinese coronavirus pandemic, according to the Thai Restaurant Association. The Thai Restaurant Association president, Ms. Thanawan, said that although the government allowed restaurants to reopen on May the 3rd, they must follow disease control measures, including social distancing, and the limitation of customer numbers at restaurants. This limits the number of customers eating at a restaurant. Groups of family members and friends choose food delivery services. Instead of sitting separately at restaurants, this causes sales at restaurants to drop by as much as 80%, she said. Restauranteurs must continue to pay rent and many of them have to pay half the salaries of employees and have them work on every other day, Ms. Thanawan said. She said she hoped the government would allow each restaurant to welcome more customers in its subsequent stages of easing business lockdowns. Three people were shot dead this morning at a radio station in the northern province of Pitsinaluk in what police suspect was a result of an internal dispute. The three victims were the station director and two engineers. The alleged gunman, also an engineer at the station, waited at the station after the shootings until the police arrived. He surrendered with a 9mm semi-automatic pistol and a 38 calibre revolver. Police Commissioner of the 6th Province Police Bureau, who attended the crime scene, ordered officers to keep a close watch on the suspect for fear he might try to harm himself. Following the incident, the station suspended its broadcast until further notice. And don't forget, all these news articles you are watching now will be discussed on our live stream channel, Talkback Thailand, where our viewers can have a say as well. Just follow the link in the description below.